In this video, we're color matching the Mandalorian's Dark Saber. Oh yeah, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. Hey, what's going on all my fellow bait chuckers? Thanks for clicking on the video. Just got back from uh, Wally World with my son. Had to pick up some more cookie sheets because, well, the other ones are completely full. I got 10 full trays of baits. Probably should bag some of these up, but no, we went out and bought more cookie sheets instead. We got a package in the mail, and you know what that means. Time to do a little unboxing. Now, I know the unboxing is not why you clicked on the video. I mean, what you're really here for is for this. We got a brand new mold. But we got home from Wally World and this was waiting for me on the porch. So I am super excited to open this up because I've been waiting a minute for this to arrive. Picked up some new merch from Brian Latimer. Oh, b -Lap. He was killing it down there at Okeechobee. I tell you, he puts on a hell of a show. Huh? Is that sweet or what? Picked up some of his new Excite Bike gear. I know it was a limited drop, so I grabbed a t-shirt, a Vibes hat, and then a sweatshirt as well. Was hoping to get my hands on black, but uh, it was all sold out, but we got ourselves a white one left, so sweet. Can't wait to wear that out on the boat. Now you may already notice the video's starting off a little bit different than we normally do. That's because, well, I don't know, I felt like we need to switch it up a little bit. I don't really want to get pigeonholed into the exact same formatted video every single time, you know? We gotta have some fun with it. If you want to jump straight to the bait making here, no worries, I got chapters down below in the description. You can jump right to the recipe that we're doing for today. But if you want to see what's going on here in the shop, I have to clear out some of this stuff before we can get to making this. So uh, come along for the ride. There's so much going on in the shop right now. <laughs> So, so I grabbed more cookie sheets because I like to lay my baits out on cookie sheets. I know a lot of people cure their baits a lot of different ways. I like to lay mine out flat as I can according to their original shape in the mold and let them cure for a few days that way. I found that this really yields the best results for me. I get the least amount of defects when I do it this way. I've tried hanging the baits, but even then I find that when they cure, a lot of the tails and flappy parts all tend to just be you know drooping straight back and not really holding to the form that they should have inside of the mold so I try and lay everything out flat and this is again like I said I get the best results the problem is it takes up a ton of room so really I need to get some of these bagged up but I like to you know they have to cure for like a week or so I just find you know you can certainly bag them up 24 48 hours later but I find letting them sit out giving them a full week to cure just really yields the best results this is kind of the stuff I've been working on the last few weeks here I'm just trying to get caught up on some orders this is a stack of some flapping tracks and other flipping and punching baits I'm actually kind of getting this all prepped for future videos here on the channel so my bait making area is relatively small I don't have a whole lot of counter space over here so really before I work on a new set of baits like I want to for today for this dark saber build I really have to clear out everything I have going on here so I've been clearing out the five cups of plastic that we used from the last video because again I don't really have a whole lot of place to storm and I need my equipment to use for the new baits etc so really I've just been making a bunch of sprue colors and uh, mashing them up together and using them in the most useful way I can where where should we start here yeah here we go all right, so here's a look. These are some of the kiwi lizards I made. So this was using the leftover kiwi plastic that we had. And then I used the blue craw and then finished out the blue craw recipe for some brush hogs. This actually makes for a really great brush hog recipe. So you can see chocolate brown in the middle to the blue on the outer edges there. So it really works good for a brush hog mold. So this tray is some more brush hogs, and this is kind of a cross between the two. It's just a double laminate. We put the kiwis on top, and then the blue craw on the bottom. You can see a nice, beautiful laminate there. So blue craw on one side, kiwis on the other. So these will be fun to throw as well. 
So this tray is something I was working on, again, using all sprue colors, but trying to do as much of a color match as I could to the Reaction Innovations Waterbug color. It's like a watermelon red and black flake on one side with a June bug on the other. One of my favorite colors for flipping and punching, and uh, wanted to get used to the Flap and Drax bait, because believe it or not, I've never ever thrown a Pit Boss style bait before. So I'm uh, going to be Texas rigging this up. Made a couple different colors of this mold, so we'll have something to throw for for the next couple weeks once the weather clears up. So water bug, flapping drags, both the five inch as well as the four inch. We also made a killer Okeechobee craw. I mean, that turned out nice as well. This is utilizing one of the new colors I got from MF. I mean, it's just a wonderful translucent blue. So real heavy on the blue flake there, you know, typical for Okeechobee Craw. And then a nice green pumpkin black on the back side there. Again, just utilizing sprue colors, taking all old plastics that I had, leftover cups of plastic, and making the best use of them to, you know, clear up some room so we can make new baits. And this is the color I poured last night. Those of you who follow me on Instagram probably already have seen it. Uh, I don't know what to call this other than firebug. Again, just kind of messing around. But it's basically like a June bug on one side. And then this is actually leftover melts from the fire crawl video we did. If you missed that video, I'll put a link to it in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So we have kind of an orange with red and black flake and pearl on the bottom. And then we have a June bug on the top. I mean, they're symmetrical baits, so one doesn't really matter what's the bottom, what's the top, but yeah, so we got a whole tray of those. I just figured, you know, why not? Oh, I also forgot. Look, we have some leftover Okeechobee craw worms. Should we demold these together? Here you go. I'll let you look first. How's it look? Oh yeah, look at that. Super reflective blue. Green pumpkin, black flake. There's some other blue and green flake in there as well. I was messing around, but uh, yeah. Seven inch finesse open pour worm by Epic Bait Molts. Wonderful, wonderful mold. I really love the shape of this finesse worm. It reminds me a lot of the net baked T Mac, which is one of my favorite worms. I can't say enough good things about this seven inch finesse worm open pour. Wonderful action here. Check out the open pours from Epic Bait Molds. They definitely have a growing selection. I'll leave a link to it down below if you're interested in this. If you're into shaky heads like I am, you're definitely going to want something like this in your arsenal. These Okeechobees should do really, really good. I know for a fact this color slams up at the Delta, so I'm really excited. Okay, let me get you down in here. Let me show you some of the other cool stuff we've been working on. So these are some chartreuse pepper whip wads I've been working on as trailers for those G-Rat fighting fish. Uh, and then again, was messing around with some of the colors. This was left over from the shiny shad that I did, which turned out really good into another color called dirty back shad. I mean, look at that epic aggro, huh? That is just awesome. It's violet purple and I'm sure the camera and the lighting in here is not doing this any justice at all. Can you see that violet shimmer in there on that pearl? That bloodline in there? Oof. The aggro. I'm having a lot of fun with the aggro open pour baits. Here's another one I did with some leftovers there. There's the olive oil with some blue flake in there on top. So again, hard to see. Maybe you can kind of see it in the tail a little bit there. This one here is the same kind of chartreuse belly, but it's got that purple shimmer blue nightmare back to it. Again, you can see the reflection here in the tail. And here's a tray of a really cool color that I've developed that I've kind of called Dirty Back Shad now. It started off as a epic whip wad, and this is a color match to the G-Rats Fighting Fish Shiny Shad. And so we use the MF Violet Pearl in the bottom of the bait, so it has a violet pearl hue to it. And then on the top is that transparent smoke with the uh, sparkle violet flake in there that we actually burnt on purpose in order to get more of a green gold look to it. This has turned out just absolutely awesome. So for now I've been calling this Dirty Back Shad, and there it is in the Epic Prey Bait. And it looks awesome in that as well. So we'll probably be doing a separate video on this color alone. 
I really, really like this color. Sometimes, you know, you're just experimenting and you kind of hit a home run. And I think we did with this color right here. Dirty Back Shad. Definitely going to have a video on this color in the future. Maybe we'll even feature it with the Epic Prey Baits because it's such a wonderful mold. And then here it is also in the Epic Agro. Again, took that same pattern and poured that. So, really cool. I can't wait to pour some more. So yeah, you know, that's just some of the stuff that we're working on right now. And, uh, you know, I'm a new bait maker, just like a lot of you out there. I am by no means a professional or an expert. So uh, I'm just kind of sharing my experience with all of you along the way. The next step for me is I got to get this mess cleaned up over here. We got all these colors that we have to get up on the wall. There is roughly a hundred or so here, and I need to make room for about 150 because Jeff has more colors on the way. But we're gonna build a new shelf. I gotta get all of this stuff off of the workbench and up there on the wall, nice and neat in an orderly fashion. If you can't tell, I like my workshop nice and organized. Oh, and we also grabbed, this is new, you might've seen this on Instagram as well. We picked up a 10 ounce injector as well as a triple injector. So we gotta build mounts for those, get those mounted up on the wall and find space for all of that. So yeah. Okay, so I guess at some point we better stay on topic and actually get to the point of this video. And that's this color right here. This is a color that I like to call the dark saber. So I'm a huge, huge Star Wars fan, and I'm a huge fan of what Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are doing with The Mandalorian right now. I really wanted to try and do a video about the Darksaber. This is a really fun color that I wanted to cover tonight. Now, this is shot here in a core shot worm, and first I was gonna do the video using the core shot worm, but then I realized, you know, that really alienates a lot of folks because not everyone is gonna have a core shot mold. So I want you all to be able to do this at home. So I have a couple ideas. I wanna do some open pours with the finesse worm mold that I showed you earlier. This way you don't even have to worry about injectors. You can do it with any open pour mold. We'll do a dual layer laminate and then we'll try and fire up the triple injector, which I have never used yet, and we'll try and triple laminate and see if we can't get a similar effect to a core shot that we can inside of a triple laminate. So, Dark Saber, this is the color for today. We're gonna go ahead and throw all the colors that you're gonna need up on the screen right now. The color recipe for the Dark Saber is extremely simple. It's a little bit of dead on black for the core, it is a little bit of dead on snow shine for the outer edges of the dark saber. And we're gonna use the MF's Disco Violet Flake in both the core and the outer edge of the dark saber. Like I said, extremely simple, and it's all about the way that we layer and inject this bait. Now, when I started looking at pictures of the dark saber online, I started to realize that the center core of the saber was actually dark, hence the name dark saber. Dark black core with white glowing edges. When I came up with this recipe, I immediately jumped to my core shot mold. So for those of you who have a core shot mold, you can see here, I did pure black in the middle, just a touch of the sparkle flake in there. But for the outer edges, I used that snow shine and the sparkle flake and it turned out awesome. I mean, it really does look like a dark saber. White, shiny glowing edges with a dark core in the middle. But as mentioned earlier, not everyone's gonna have this mold. So I'd be a fun video to watch. Not everyone would be able to participate. So what I thought we would do before we get to the Maker Grub is real quick, let's try a couple different injection methods. We know the core shot works, but let's try it in a classic stick bait mold with both a dual and a triple injector, as well as a seven inch finesse worm mold, again, with the dual and the triple injector. And now for those of you who don't happen to have a dual or a triple injector, hey, totally understand. We're also going to try it with the open pour as well. This is the seven inch finesse open pour. This way we can cover a bunch of options, whether you have a stick bait mold, whether you have an open pour finesse worm mold, or whether you just have a finesse worm or really any type of worm mold. Hopefully the triple or double ejection will get us similar results that we get to the core shot. So 
we are ready with one cup of plastic. The other two still have a few seconds to go. So we're going to start off with the black. We'll start off with the core of the dark saber. So 20 drops of dead on plastics black. There we go. 20 drops of black is going to be plenty enough for us to get that dark core. That's thick enough to where we don't want to see through it. All right, sounds like our other plastisol is ready there. And now to spruce that up a bit, we're going to add the MF Disco Violet Flake, the .015, and we're going to add a full 1 8 So that's basically going to be two scoops from the 1 16th. There we go. Now that we have the sparkle flake in there, we have to make sure that we keep in mind our temperatures because we don't want to lose that purpleness of the sparkle flake. So we're going to have to keep everything under 340 degrees. Can you see that sparkle there? With the black, it really takes on kind of a dark purple, almost a blue sheen to it. So this will look really good once we get all of the bubbles vacuumed out. All right, so now let's move on to our clear plastic. Okay, so now that we've got both of these up to temperature ready to go, we're going to have to add the snow shine into both of these. So since we're dealing with one cup, we're going to be putting 20 drops of snow shine into each cup. All right, there we go. 20 drops into each cup, and you can see that's just going to completely take over. So we're going to be using just those 20 drops. That's it no other colors because we want this to be as clear and as see-through as possible but we just want that snow shine to add a little bit of shimmer. Can you see all that shimmer in there? Look at that. Look at that shimmer. Love the snow shine. Really cool effect. So now what we're going to do is also add 1 8 of a teaspoon of the Disco Violet Flake to each of these as well. All right, and there we go. That is going to give us our purple shimmer for the lightsabers, or excuse me, dark saber rather. That snow shine really plays well with that sparkle violet flake. I like it a lot. And we're dealing with three cups of hot plastic sauce, so let's make sure to glove up and let's get these into the vacuum chamber. All right, here we go. We got everything up to temperature. Heck of a lot harder than you would think it would be. My goodness, let's try and give this a shot. This is actually the third time that we're doing this. Hopefully this won't be a fail. Got our block all heated up. Goodness gracious, here we go. Doing it quick, doing it quick. Definitely think we got the laminate there that time on both of them. Woo! This triple injector. Oh, it'll put hair on your chest. My goodness. While we still got these at temperature, I want to get the tails shot here for the maker grub as well. Some triple laminate tail action. So let's see if we can't get this. Here we go. I don't use much plastic at all, really. Okay, so let's see how our triple injection turned out. This is the one I'm worried about the most, the five inch stick bait, because it sucked in a lot of plastic. So hopefully we got a good triple laminate and we don't have to do this another time because I'm telling you, getting three cups of plastic to be the same temperature was way harder than you think it is. Okay. And there we go. Looks like we got a full set. So there we go. All right. You can kind of see that effect. See the clear on the side there? Okay. So if we look at all these, I wonder if we get a good example. There we go. Here's a good one. 
<laughs> we did it. Look at this. Can you see that? That black stripe right down the middle? Clear on both sides. All right. Triple laminate stick worm. Okay. The triple lamy can do it. Look at that. Look at that. Clear, black stripe, and then clear. So you got one outer edge of the dark saber, you got the black core, and then you have the other outer edge. All right, dark saber, triple lamy in the five inch classic stick bait. Awesome. This is so cool. There we go. Can you see the translucency? Can you see the cores in every single one of the baits? There it is right down there. Awesome. Look at that. Dark Saber. Oof. Oh, that's a that's a heck of a stick bait right there. I'll tell you what. Huh? Look at that. Dark Saber. Okay, let's check out the seven inch finesse worm. Now these are much, much thinner, but I definitely see the laminate in there as well. Can you see it in there, that thin strip? Look at that thin strip in there. Wow. That is so cool. Oh, there's a real good shot of it. Look at that. See that strip of black in there, just like a dark saber? Clear edge, dark core, clear edge. Oh yeah. That is awesome. Look at that core in all those worms. Look at that. Okay, so I think we've definitely proven we can get the dark saber effect with a triple injector. That is awesome stuff. Okay, last but not least, let's check on the tail for the Mega Grub. If this came out right, then we should have a nice tri-color tail. We did it twice. Oh, yep. Oh, there we go. Well, that one wanted to stay on. All right, look at that. There we go. Now, it's real easy to see here the laminate, the triple lamy with the clear, the dark in the middle, and then the clear. So that's going to look really awesome as a tail on our Mega Grub. Woo. Oh, I can't wait. This is going to be an awesome dark saver. Look at that laminate, huh? All the way to the tip. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, we're getting set up for the dual laminate. We're about 318, 320 over there. About 312, 310 over here. I think we are ready to go. We are gloved up, ready to go. Dual injector, dark saber laminate. All right, let's go with the finesse worms first. There we, go. we got black on the bottom. We got the clear on the top. Let's get the stick worms in there. Mm, that felt good. Awesome. Get everything topped off. Wow, that double injector is like a walk in the park compared to that triple injector. My goodness. Okay, here we are. Five inch classic stick bait, dark saber laminate, dual laminate. Let's see, how did we do? Oh yeah, looking good. Oh yeah, there it is, look at that. Beautiful 50-50 laminate right down the center of all those, look at that. It's black, you got that clear see-through there. Oh yeah, beautiful. Hmm. Looks like every single one. 50-50 dark saber laminate, look at that. Black on one side, shiny like a dark saber on the other, all in the same bait. That is going to be flashy underwater. 
I would say anywhere you throw a black and blue Senko, you could easily throw one of these. Oh yeah, fantastic. Beautiful stuff. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at the finesse worms. Okay, from the surface, looks like we got a good laminate. What do you say? Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. I think we got another beautiful set of laminates. Look at that, 50-50, right down the center of the worm. We got the outer coating on top with the shine and then the black core as the bottom base. Oh yeah, look at, look at that. As you just twist it, that is gonna look amazing in the water. Ooh. Oh yeah. Seven inch finesse worm in the dark saber. Awesome, awesome stuff. Super, super cool. Love this color. I'm glad I tried to color match it. Fantastic stuff. Okay, next up is the open pour, and what we're going to try and do is put a thin layer in these first three cavities right here so we can do a triple, and then we're going to do a thicker layer in these bottom three down here for a double laminate. So, three triples and two doubles. Let's see how that goes. Nice thin layer in these first three. Because we are going to try and triple. I don't know. Okay. There we go. Now for these second three here, let's do a little bit thicker of a pour. Definitely not going as fast. Nice and slow. Nice hot mold, so we let that plastic flow where it needs to flow. All right, so there you have it. We've got three thin layers and then three thicker layers right there. So let's uh, heat up the black plastic now and let's get this rest of it going. Okay, we have our black plastic ready to go. So let's get a nice thin layer in the back so we can triple lamy it. Let's see here. I don't know. We'll see. Whew. Definitely sloppy when you're trying to go quick like that. Oh, I think that one was our best one yet. Oh, we dropped in that one, so let's go ahead and fill this one all the way up. Whew, a little overpour, that's okay. We'll get that all cleaned up.
That one was much cleaner. That was our best one yet. Let's get this last one. There we go. Woo! Awesome. All right, well. Well, this one right here was obviously a little over poured. That was the best one yet. And I think we do have enough room in these last three for a triple laminate. So uh, let's get that clear plastic heated up. We'll get those last three poured and then we can bake the entire tray. Okay, here we go. Let's get that last layer poured on these back three worms here. Doesn't take much. We definitely over poured that back one. Okay. Not too bad, a little sloppy. I think we put too much in in that middle pour there. Alright, so now I'm going to turn my hot plate up to 165 because I'm working in Celsius here and then I will let this bake basically for about 10 minutes. I'm going to set the timer on my phone and then after 10 minutes we'll go ahead and pull this off and let it cool down. All right, and now it is time to move on to what we've all been waiting for, which is the 12-inch Mega Grub. And first, before we dirty this up, as you can see, this is a virgin mold, never been poured before. And, uh, you know, it's really just at the point where Jason's just flexing. Uh, you can see that deionized water unit really paying off with that just absolute mirror finish of a shine. And look at this. Huh? Nice little knurled edge here, a little trim action, huh? Look at that, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Jason really flexing over here. Look at that polish and sheen. You can see the whole color rack back there. So we've got this on the hot plate, warming up. It's really just on warm. The whole point is simply to just take the chill off of the mold so it's not ice cold. We're painstakingly heating up our clear plastic with the sparkle flake 30 seconds at a time because we don't want to go over 340 degrees and we want to make sure we keep all of that sparkle flake intact because that's really what's going to give us that cool visual effect as it reflects off of the black. So we're going to be doing a skin pour mold first. We're going to be filling up this cavity, doing a nice thick skin pour, and then we're going to seal up the mold, and then we're going to inject some nice hard salt water blend plastic to give it some firmness, and then you never know. Maybe we'll actually be able to fish this up at the Delta. Okay, 300, 302, nice and cool. I think this is a great temperature to start with the skin pour. Now, anytime you're doing a skin pour, I definitely recommend wearing gloves on both hands, especially in this instance here, because we're dealing with a lot of hot plastic. Okay, so we're just going to start here. We're going to fill this up. All right, we're going to make sure, wiggle it around a little bit, get a good thick good thick pour there we want it nice and thick skin there getting all the way up to the edges if we can there we go and then we're just going to dump it out just like that bring some of it back yeah there we go and just like that, we have a nice skin pour. All right, let's do the other side. Here we go. Just 
slide that out of the way. Okay, here we go. Similar thing again. We're going to fill up the mold. Okay, sloshing around a little bit. We definitely want to make sure we cover all the edges. It's okay. We can go back and clean it up afterwards. Really just trying to balance here what we're doing. You see that? There you go. Then we'll dump that out. Come back a little bit there. Alright, and there we go. And now you see we have a beautiful skin pour on both sides. Now, as soon as this cools, what we'll come through and we'll pinch all of this off here. We'll clean the excess off because we only want the skin pour to be just inside the body of the grub here. And then once that's all done, we'll be able to lay our tails in and then inject it with some fresh plastic. See here, we'll just come through. And then we'll just work our way all the way around just like that and we'll continue to work our way all the way around the bait to make sure that all the edges are clean same thing up here at the front we'll come through right on the inside of the head and we'll pinch all that off so that comes out and there we go Oh, we got a little bit down here there we go we got to make sure there's room for that tail all right and there we go beautiful skin pour all the way through that's gonna look awesome once we fill the core with the black oh yeah okay next we're gonna take our tail here just get a couple drops of worm oil you don't need a whole lot and you're just gonna rub this in our hands here we're going to get this all lubricated so we can drop this in the mold. Alright, there we go. Look at that. Drops right in to place. There we go. Beautiful. Just like that. All right, and if we've done our job correctly, then that should slide right on top for a nice tight fit. And it does. We are good to go. Look, just look how good that mold looks with that knurled edge like that. Oh yeah, looking good. Very sharp. Okay, so before we get to the Mega Grub, first let's take a look at how our open pours did, huh? Now you can see we went ahead and cleaned up the entire surface. We just come through and pinch off all the excess plastisol that's on the top there. Let's start with these triple laminates here, huh? Oh, look at that. Okay. Well, let's take a look. There's definitely a triple laminate. It looks good. I mean, from far away, it looks good. I mean, I would fish it for sure. You definitely got the dark saber effect on the front and the back. You can see a very thin layer there in between. Looking good. Let's check the other one. Yeah, there we go. Triple laminate there as well. Let's check this last one. How did we do? How did we do? Yeah, look at that. All right. Whew, that worm blend is super, super soft. So there you go. If you don't happen to have a dual injector or a triple injector, you can do an open pour version of the Dark Saber colorway there and get yourself a nice effect that way as well. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Sweet. Okay, and what about the dual laminates? Yeah, those look pretty good too. 
And there you go. Those definitely have that 50-50 look. Black with a little bit of fleck on the back of it there, but the front is where it really shines. Let's get these other ones out here. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Dark Saber, huh? 50-50 laminate. I'm digging it. Sweet. There you have it. Dark Saber Worms. You have the three triple laminates on the top and you have the dual layer laminate there on the bottom. You can see similar effect of all the worms. Awesome. Really gives that cool Dark Saber look. Really, really cool looking worm. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, here it is. The moment we've all been waiting for. The 12 inch mega curly tail grub. Did we make a dark saber grub? I'm told that's a big mold to crack open. That's a big mold to crack open. It's coming out on that side. Oh. <laughs> Would you look at that? Whoa. Well, I think if there was ever a dark saber, that would be it. Look at the way that pairs up with the tail there. Oh, that's awesome stuff. Is it? Yeah. Relatively cool. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. That is awesome. Huh? Dark Saber Mega Grub? Come on. I mean, come on now. Is that cool or what? Look at the way the laminate comes all the way through the tail. You got that Dark Saber all the look at that. It just fall that black streak follows it all the way through. Boom. So cool. So cool. Just take a look at that sparkle of the snow shine with that disco violet flake in there. <laughs> wow. Super, super cool. So there we go, the Dark Saber. What do you think? If you ask me, I think it's pretty close. I really enjoyed this color and I think it's actually usable. I think you could definitely use this in a stick worm or a finesse worm out on the Delta and hopefully once the weather clears up, we'll go out and do just that. And you know, now that I'm looking at the 12 inch Mega Grub, I mean, it has a big flappy tail, but it's not necessarily all that big. I think a nice eight, nine pound bass could easily swallow this whole grub. So uh, you never know. We got two of these poured up. You might see a video in the future of us trying to catch a giant. I mean, we got big old striper out there on the Delta. So I think something definitely might pick this up once the water clears up just a little bit. So. Be on the lookout for that, which is why you should be subscribing to the channel if you're not already. The button's right down there in the lower left hand corner of the screen. And uh, you know, you're gonna wanna hit that bell too in case uh, we go live. You're not gonna wanna miss that either. So, uh, Dark Saber. Let me know what you think. Hopefully this inspired you to do a fun color match of your own at home. Maybe there's something out of the ordinary that you want a color match. It could be a Pokemon. It could be whatever. Whatever you want a color match. That's the beautiful thing about this hobby. And you never know if the color might actually be something you can use to go catch some fish with. And this definitely gives me some ideas. And I think we might have to do something special for Star Wars Day. But until next time. Y'all know who it is, your friend on this end, Michael out here on the Delta Slews, reminding you 
They keep on chucking. I'll get back with you.